Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This video is a bit of a deeper look at the testing that I've been doing with the 27DM01 at 72 volts, as well as some answers to questions that were posted online after the last video. I'll do a bit of a comparison with the BBSHD as well, where it fits, as there's definitely some interest in that and some more depth later on as well. I know that we're focused to some extent on how much power that we can extract from this motor, but the first part of this video kind of demonstrates something that in many ways I'm much more excited about with this motor. It shows one of the biggest difference with the BBSHD and even the X1 motor, and that is the reduction ratio, and also how you can exploit it with some settings in the Egg Rider. Right now I'm using PAS to pedal up the hill, and even though I'm using 72 volts, it's not overrunning the crank. I'm putting an effort here along with the motor, and I'm able to shift gears to increase or decrease this effort. When I mean overrunning, this is when the assist power engages and moves the chainring essentially too fast for the human to keep up with, and that leads to what's called ghost pedaling. You're not really doing anything, just moving your legs to give the impression of pedaling. With the BBSHD, it's almost impossible to avoid this at 72 volts, largely due to its 22 to 1 reduction ratio. The CYCX1 also tends to overrun the cranks at 72 volts, less due to the gearing at 36 to 1, but because of its high native RPM of around 12,000 at 72 volts. The motor just wants to run kind of too fast. The DM01 though has a 40 to 1 reduction ratio and a lower natural RPM, which peaks about 8,000 at 72 volts. So that means there's already almost half the speed of the crank compared to the BBSHD. The trick is to disable field weakening on your riding profile. With the Egg Rider, we use our ASI kits and you can have two riding profiles. So for my road profile, which is running now, I set the field weakening to zero. The effect of this all means that you get a decent exercise cadence of 80 to 100. It's possible even with the higher motor RPMs that you get with a 72 volt battery. The upshot here is that you can set the field weakening for the other mode at a higher level and enjoy the higher top speeds and switch between the two modes when you want to. The big takeaway for me here is that if this motor proves reliable at this level of power and if we can get the torque sensor to play nicely and there'll be some more on that in a bit, we might finally have that ultimate balance of a bike that you can ride comfortably as a pedal assist bike restricting the power to meet the law, and then unleash it at 72 volts. Take all the advantages that the BBSHD has over the CYC in terms of low-end torque, ease of repair, quieter running, and combine it with a bike that you can also ride comfortably with a torque sensor at 72 volts. I'm probably getting a bit ahead of myself here, but it looks promising. That for me has always been like the holy grail of an e-bike, to have one that was a pleasure to ride at low speeds and still let you rip it hard when it's appropriate. The true stealth dirt bike. So you don't have to pretend for the police, you can genuinely show that it's restricted to 750 watts and 32 kph. Talk a bit about the gears. Um, right now this motor has a 46T sprocket on it. I'd like to have used the 42T that I got with the DMO2, but it's not quite the right shape to clear the reduction gear by a few millimeters. I've suggested that the gear is worked on a bit. It's adequate. I'm not getting chain jumping, but I'd like to see it improved and maybe done with like the narrow wide pan. The rear cassette I have, the largest gear is 32T, and I'd like to get a bit closer to the one-to-one -one ratio for climbing or starting on hills, like for a fat bike, um, or a heavier tire, heavier load, or rider, it would stress the motor less. Uh, due to the 40 to 1 reduction ratio, you do need to use gears with this motor. You can't do the same thing you can do with the BBSHD and run all the way from 0 to 65 kph plus with the 1 to 1 ratio. You do need to shift to high gears to do the same thing. So the single speed setups are probably out with this motor. Uh, the positive mean positive being you'd be getting a much more functional pedal assist situation. I may well see if I can switch out the rear mech for something different with a wider range. I might be able to use the setup for my fat bike which had a long cage. In terms of the torque sensor there were quite a few questions about that aspect of the motor which is the other area where this motor differs to the BBS to the BBSHD and is similar to the to the CYCX1. 
having a motor in the class of the BBS HD with the torque sensor, it, it's kind of the holy grail for a lot of us. Right, despite the CYC X1 being a more modern motor with the torque sensor, its smaller size means it just doesn't have that same torquiness, especially at lower speeds, that you can get with a modified BBS HD. As it stands, however, we've not been able to get the sensor to play nicely. The video here um, showed cadence based pass, which is it's the same as with the BBS HD. On a positive note, though, we are in contact with 27 and they are going to help us figure it out. The language is a little bit of a barrier, but we do have the torque sensor in testing, and with a bit of luck, it's just a setting that needs some tweaking. Right? It works fine with the stock controller, so there really is no reason why it shouldn't work with the ASI controller either. Uh, some other differences with the BBS HD are things like the Sprag clutch design, but in general, they're pretty similar motors in how they mount the bike frame and how they operate. So I'm really quite hopeful that the DMO1 will prove to be similarly robust when it comes to running high power, but really only testing and, and time on the bike will do that. Um, in terms of making things available for people or doing a kit, like people have been asking about that, and it's kind of early days at the minute really, we like to be fairly sure of things before we start shipping anything out because we don't want people really to do our testing for us. Uh, if people are like really super keen, we might be able to figure something out. Like if you want to do testing essentially, but we're not really in the position where we can send people out kits for free in return for testing. Like we just don't have that kind of resource. We're, we're kind of small. If being part of something new excites you and you want to be part of the early development of this kit, then there's a possibility. But we can't make the same kind of guarantees with this motor as we can with, say, the BBS HD. Um, like with the faster stuff on this video, which um, we're into now, the field weakening is set at 25%. Like I can go up to 40% with this setup, but for now I'm keeping a cap on it a little bit. Like it felt plenty fast enough for this bike in the conditions. It, it's starting to get decently cold here and I've no wish to get splattered all over the pavement. So it might need to wait for spring to find a safe and straight road to do you know some top speed testing, but it accelerates fast. It gets you up to like speed fast. Um, I felt like there was a fair bit left to give. I did try to GPS track this ride, but for some reason Strava didn't want to play nicely with me. I'm not 100% sure why. I'm going to have the speed sensor set up properly again soon though, so that should fix that kind of problem. Uh, in terms of heat build up with the motor, at the end of the ride the heat was showing at 22C, but when I rested it, it did go up to 34C, which means that the motor core probably around 40C. Uh, right now I have the thermistor on the exterior of the motor and it's not it's not that well insulated so I'm going to do a bit of work on that and try and get some more some more realistic readings. Uh, the controller has been calibrated to take that into consideration. Uh, in hotter weather it probably would have shown a bit better um, and it definitely is going to build up more heat in hotter weather. But overall considering the wattage and that I was hammering it uh, it's not too bad and it's kind of in line with what I was getting with the modified BBS HD. Uh, similar to the BBS HD, there's also a nylon gear in the motor, so it might be that this is a weak point. Uh, I didn't find it a problem with the BBS HD running one-to-one. -one. I'm still on my original nylon gear, but this is a different motor, different reduction ratio. I, in theory, I could run a one-to-two ratio and it should match the BBS HD's one-to-one -one ratio and put the same stress load on a nylon gear. But again, I'm not gonna know until it's been tested like a great deal more. Uh, we may well look to do a peak gear for this motor as well. Uh, from here, I'm just gonna be doing as much testing as I can to fit in with the weather. Um, it'll probably be a lot more testing of PAS because uh, we're gonna be getting snow and ice pretty soon. I have fit studded tires to the bike, um, but it's not quite the same as the ones with my fat bike. And you know, I'm obviously not gonna be going over 60 kilometers an hour uh, on this bike when there's ice and snow around. But I I'm still looking forward to getting out and, and doing some riding. Uh, overall, it it's really exciting to be testing this motor. Like, it feels great riding it like it feels fast it accelerates fast um, it feels nicely balanced and I love the fact that um, you can still realistically ride it 
with pedal assist on the same machine as a bike that you, you can you know accelerate to over 70 kilometers an hour at 72 volts um yeah it, it, it's awesome so there's gonna be lots more on this if you have questions um post them in the comments uh, you're welcome to join on discord um, there'll be more information on discord in in the two seven chat rooms on there uh, so you're welcome to to join on there and there'll be links in the descriptions anyway thanks for watching if you got this far um, special thanks to all the channel members um, you, you really do make a big difference and uh, i'll see you in the next video cheers